Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Saturday, June 28th, 2025. Now, before I do get started with the video, I do want to give you all a heads up that there is going to be some background noise potentially in today's video, and that is because I am in a hotel room where we do have family opening, closing doors, walking around, so I do apologize by that. I will try my best at keeping all of the sound out of today's video. So here's a look at the latest GOES-19 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And as we can see, there are a couple of weather disturbances down there in the deep tropics, especially in the Bay of Campeche, in the Yucatan Peninsula, in the Southern Gulf, and of course over here in the Eastern Pacific, where we are keeping an eye on our next area of interest. This could become our next tropical storm or hurricane as it moves off towards the west-northwest. And then, of course, we have another area of disturbed weather like we just talked about here in the Bay of Campeche over the Yucatan Peninsula in the southern Gulf that has a lot of showers and thunderstorms associated with it. And this is expected to organize in the coming days. And then last but not least, we also have another area of disturbed weather moving over portions of the Leeward and Windward Islands, bringing some showers and thunderstorms today to Guadalupe, Dominica, as well as Martinique and some of the U.S. and British virgin islands and that's due to a weak tropical wave transversing the area but due to unfavorable upper level winds this system is not expected to develop anytime soon and looking at the rest of the deep tropical atlantic here yes very dry stable and warm aloft and that is preventing any convection down here and you can see the stratocumulus uh, build up indication that the air mass is pretty dry and it's quite stable now with that being said let's take a look at our latest gfs model which stands for global forecasting system or known as the american model and what we're looking at here is a three plot system and since we can zoom in on these things that will make it easier for you all to understand with what we're actually looking at here. So the color shading here on your screen actually indicates where we have a lot of spin in the atmosphere, and that's vorticity, cyclonically speaking. All right, and then the wind barbs down here. So let's kind of just zoom in. So those little wind barbs, those are telling us what the wind is, how strong it is. So in this case, we're seeing 10 to 15, even 20 knot winds out of the easterly direction. So this will give us wind direction and speed at the same time with those barbs. And then of course, these lines are height lines, these black solid 154, 156. You subdue the zero, so that's uh, 1,560 meters. So you have to go up that high to get to the 850 millibar level, which is roughly on average about 4,900 feet, even 5,000 feet into the atmosphere. So this is the lower half. This is the, the slice of the atmosphere that we're looking at in the lower levels. So putting this into motion here, let's play this through for you all. And so as we go forward, you can see in the next 60 or in the next three days, this big sprawling ridge of high pressure. And sorry, I don't have my annotation tool on the iPad here today. So bear with me here as we explain or as I try to explain things as good as I can. So we have this nice good ridge of high pressure here with the higher heights. Down here we have easterly flow and that is a stable setup here down in the deep tropics and that's why we're just not seeing any formation. No tropical storms, no hurricanes, that sort of thing. And I want to remind you all, this is July 1st. Okay, this is the 1st of July. We have a long way to go. I want to keep reminding you all, uh, you know, the peak of the hurricane season really doesn't begin until about late August into September. And this is only early, very the first day of July. So putting this into motion, we can see that this pattern continues. Nice good tropical wave here coming off of Africa. Here's a pretty strong circulation, but of course, this is broad. It's going to bring down a lot of drier air. And then down to the south, where we have westerly winds, this is that intertropical convergence zone. This is the monsoon trough extending out of western Africa. 
and this is what we typically want to see ahead of a busy season because when you get these westerly winds you get vorticity you get spin especially if you get trade winds that come sharply out of the northeasterly direction just north of that itcf or i uh yeah i yeah itf the what which stands for intertropical uh front so putting this into motion even further, you know, let's go out to 204 hours. So this would be July 6th. And what we have, again, big sprawling ridge of high pressure out there in the North Atlantic. Another wave coming off of Africa. But look what the GFS is sniffing out here. This is at least in the 12Z run that just it came in about like 10 minutes ago. We have a tropical system a tropical disturbance moving into mississippi and alabama while we have another disturbance over here off the coast of mexico in the eastern pacific this basin my folks my guys it's just been a very very active eastern pacific um to start the season and that that's going to continue um due to uh, localized tropical forcing mechanisms in place all right and then as we go forward um in time that all calms down out there in the East Pacific. And then as we go forward in time, all the way out to the middle of July, pretty dang stable out here. Really, really stable. But that's not going to last for too long. I'm still expecting something around the middle of July, even so the GFS is not showing it because of the background state that we are entering here around the middle of the month. Now, let's take a look at the European model because the Euro is also quite similar with the GFS, only that it's not showing much in the way of tropical formation in the Gulf. So, as we can see here, um, these are the surface winds and knots, and as we can clearly see here, a weakening of the subtropical ridge to the north. That's why our trade winds are not very strong at all, as strong as they were in the past. As we bring this um, forward, uh, this is the 0-0 zero -zero run. Did we get our 12Z? So our 12Z run is coming in right now. Um, and so we can see there that ridge is pretty strong. And then as we look at our 0Z from last night, um, unfortunately, because I have, I'm a, um, I have a very busy day ahead, uh, the 12Z run is very sketchy in this forecast, as in I won't be able to show the entire run by the time it's done uh, releasing. And so we can see from last night's model run how there is just nothing out here forming. However, there is a lot of westerly wind anomalies right back in here. Very weak trade winds out here in the deep tropics of the Atlantic. And this is going to continue all the way through um, about 270 hours, all the way out to 360 hours out. As you can see, those trade winds finally relaxing and that's going to lead to a lot of oceanic warming in the next couple of weeks so that's what we're going to have to watch closely for again sorry there is some background sound folks i cannot help it got family here um a lot of a lot of foot traffic going on right now so now looking at the deep layer moisture plot here on the gfs model this is in the mid levels of the atmosphere so from about 10,000 feet all the way up to about roughly 32,000 feet. So the brown color contours here, or shading, I should say, indicates where we have a lot of dry air in the atmosphere, okay? So that's what we're looking at. Lots of dry air. And then the turquoise green colors here indicate where we have a lot of moisture in the deep layer or in the deep column. So when we put this into motion, the big problem here is we still have a lot of dry air coming off of Africa. So that Saharan air layer is going to be a problem, even so we don't see a lot of dust on satellite. That doesn't mean entirely we are not seeing dry air anymore. Okay, it could come and it could come with or come without the the dust, the the aerosols there. So um, this is three days out. This is, there's your tropical wave, by the way, that little lump of moisture. And then more drier air coming off of Africa here. This still continues to be a thing all the way out for the next, say, six to seven days. And then more drier air. More drier air continues. And then there's a little bit more moisture. These tropical waves are going to struggle. 
as they continue to move off of Africa. And that's, again, because of so much dry air out here. But we all know that's going to dissipate as we go into at least late July, mid-July perhaps, and even in the early part of August. It's climatology. That's more likely how the season's going to pan out this year. It's going to really be climatology driven, not above average or below average. And I'm still guessing we are going to have a near average hurricane season nonetheless, because what I'm about to show you. So that goes all the way out to the middle of July. So this goes 384 hours out. And what we're seeing still here is, again, plenty full of dry air out here. Pretty stable. Nothing unusual whatsoever. Now, of course, it's not just the dry air that we're looking at. It's also the deep layer vertical wind shear. I mean, talk about unfavorable conditions. There is a lot of deep layer vertical wind shear here out of the westerly direction. As you can see here by the red shading, indicates deep layer vertical wind shear values greater than 40 to 50 knots out here. And so, In fact, some areas here in the northern Caribbean have vertical wind shear values exceeding 70 to 80 knots. I mean... Any tropical wave that tries to develop deep convection, it's just not going to go well. It's not. So that's why that tropical wave in the uh, moving over into the eastern Caribbean now has literally a 0% chance of tropical formation. And this is going to continue. This vertical wind shear will last all the way for the next five days. But as we go into early July, the vertical wind shear is going to slowly relax. You can see a lot lesser vertical wind shear values here anywhere between 20 to even 30 knots and that's going to continue to be a thing all the way through the very end of the forecast period now what about that latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the national hurricane center in miami florida well as we can see here there is nearly a 50 percent chance of tropical development with invest 91 l in the bay of campeche an area of low pressure located in the eastern bay of Campeche near the Mexican coastline continues to produce a broad region of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity over the Yucatan Peninsula and adjacent waters. Additional development is possible today and Sunday as the low moves generally west-northwestward and a tropical depression could form during, the neck, during this period while the system remains over the waters of the Bay of Campeche. By Monday, this system should move inland over eastern Mexico, ending its chances of development. Regardless, though, of tropical cyclone formation, locally heavy rainfall and heavy rains are expected over portions of Belize, Guatemala, and the southeastern Mexico during the next few days. An Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft is scheduled to inve uh, investigate this system later today if necessary. So that's what we have right now that we're monitoring, at least in the Atlantic side. Now let's take a look now at the East Pacific side because this is where we have another area of interesting weather and this definitely has a much higher chance of tropical formation like anything else all right so here is the disturbance that we are watching closely over the eastern portion of the pacific offshore waters oops offshore waters of southern mexico invest 95 e Showers and thunderstorms associated with a broad area of low pressure located a few hundred miles south-southwest of the Gulf of Tehuantepec have become a little bit better organized this morning. Environmental conditions appear conducive for development and a tropical depression or storm is expected to form during the next day or so, while this system moves slowly west-northwestward off the coast of southern Mexico. Regardless of development, locally heavy rainfall is expected over portions of Central America and southeastern Mexico through the weekend. So I wanted to make that clear for all of you that are watching that this has definitely a 90% chance of formation. So we are not done seeing any development at all in the eastern Pacific. Now, when it comes to those sea surface temperatures, this is what we're seeing right now. And I will tell you what, water temperatures in the Gulf right now are very warm. Anywhere between 31 to almost 32 degrees Celsius. That is upper, upper echelon 80s, close to 90 degrees here in the big bend of florida so water temperatures up here are more than conducive to support intense 
violent hurricanes should the background state become favorable. So that is what we are really, really watching very closely here in today's video. And of course, in the Caribbean, water temperatures here are much cooler than they were this time last year. In fact, so much so that what I'm about to show you will be strikingly interesting for those that are watching. The water temperatures here in the portions of the Caribbean are in the low to mid 80s. So definitely near average to slightly below average for this time of the year, except for the far northwestern Caribbean. That's where we're running a little bit ahead of where we should be. And then definitely up here in the subtropics, running record warm. We have never seen anything like this at all, where we are already seeing water temperatures in the upper 80s to close to 90 degrees within that Gulf Stream current up there this far north. So that is an area we really need to be watching. If we get any system that curves or recurves out to sea right along the eastern seaboard, the mid-Atlantic, that could be trouble. That could be serious, similar to Isaias. Uh, which we do not want to have again. So that's what we're watching. Now, when we take a look at those sea surface temperature anomalies, this is what we're seeing. Of course, the northern northeastern Gulf is running well above average. The southern Gulf running below average. The Caribbean overall as a whole, when you kind of extrapolate it, we're running about a tenth of a degree or so above normal. So not very substantial by any means. Where we're seeing a lot of the warmth, though, is here in the subtropics. Look at this. Right off the eastern seaboard of the United States, there is an anomaly here. Even over Chesapeake Bay, look at how warm those waters are. Anywhere between 3 to 6 degrees above average in Chesapeake Bay. And then over the mid-Atlantic here, where that Gulf Stream is, running as much as 2 to 4 four degrees above average for this time of the year. So yeah, if we don't get tropical waves down here and they sneak this way into say the subtropics, they could develop very quickly without warning. And that's what we really got to watch. And then of course, in the main development region, yeah, it is near average to slightly below average for this time of the year. We have actually seen a lot more cooling despite our trade winds slacking off a lot here, which you know, is not surprising. But with those trade winds going to slacken even further over the next week, I expect this basin will quickly rewarm and recover awfully quickly. Upper ocean heat content is pretty alarming, especially in the Gulf as well and the Northwestern Caribbean. Check this out, folks. This red right here on your screen indicates that upper ocean heat content here is around 170, 180 units. That is absolutely historically high for this time of the year. We have not seen anything like this this time of the year. And again, if we get any tropical storm or tropical depression that moves over these very high upper ocean heat content waters, if the background state can cooperate, we could be looking at intense hurricane development out of this. Okay, I, I don't like to sound all scary, serious, fear-mongering, but man, we got to be concerned about this. This is some very high upper ocean heat content, and if the background state is cooperative, yeah, it's all systems go. Now, looking at the upper ocean heat content anomaly, yeah, the subtropics there in Bermuda, the mid-Atlantic, as well as the Gulf running well above average for this time of the year, and below average upper ocean heat content in most of the Caribbean and over the western MDR, which is, say, 60 degrees all the way to 40 degrees west in longitude, which is also good because that's well below average, or that's significantly lower than we were last year at this time, which, you know, it means the risk for intense hurricanes down here is not as high as it was last year, but still high enough to where we cannot take our eyes off at all. But anyways, if you found this tropical weather outlook and discussion very helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get all my tropical weather updates here as often as I can. Even so, I'm on vacation in Portland, Oregon right now, attending a wedding. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and also hit the bell notification icon and leave a comment in the section below this video. As always, I will be back with more tropical daily weather updates beginning on Monday. 
in a couple of days once I get back from my vacation. As always, have a great day, and I'll be back with you in a couple of days. Thanks for watching, folks.